Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education work sessions for October 20th, 21. Can we please stand for the pledge? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening. Uh, Dr. Sellens has appointed uh, Amy Hudock, Assistant Superintendent, to be our secretary to the board for this meeting this evening. Uh, do I have approval for the agenda, the motion? Motion to approve the agenda. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All oh, I have it. We have in front of us uh, board minutes closed sessions for October the 6th. Have I had a chance to review them? Yes. Yes. Motion to uh, approve the Closed session minutes for October 6, 2021. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. We also have uh, minutes in front of us for October the 6th open session. Has everybody had a chance to take a look at them? Yes. Motion to approve the minutes for October 6, 2021 open session. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Okay. Moving on. Um, that high school course options presentation. Um, so we have a team coming in to uh, present the options that um, high schoolers have while attending the high school. They're going to give an overview. So if there's anything that you would like to see at a later date that they dive into a little bit deeper, just let us know and then they can come back and, and present additional information. Bye. Good evening, Mr. Smith, Ms. Hudock, board members and executive team. For the record, I'm Amy Smith, mathematics supervisor and gifted and talented supervisor. And I am Adam Tolley, supervisor of career and technical education and social studies. So this evening we want to discuss some different program opportunities for our high school students and share with you just some of the different pathways students have in the course of time in high school. So within our academics and our UAs, we offer honors and advanced placements for students to be able to choose. We have career and technology education pathways. There's apprenticeships, there's dual enrollment, which offers students high school credit as well as college credit. And then we also offer the early college academy. The diagram we have here just shows you the different courses, how we have both honors and advanced placement. Our program continues to add opportunities for students. Just last year, we added a new advanced placement course into our schedule for 2D art and 3D art. So as students become, um, have that opportunity to grow in different pathways, then we offer more opportunities in the different advanced placement courses as well. Mr. Tolley. And so this is just a comprehensive list of all of the CT programs that we offer at both high schools uh, and just kind of listed in alphabetical order. And the, the last one on the list, um, Youth Apprenticeship, is one of our newest uh, pathways. And it's kind of a, a little bit of a different um, pathway than, than the others because it is a, an actual apprenticeship where students go out, but they, they earn the, the same credits. It's the same pathway to graduation as our other, as our other programs. And this is just a just a quick overview of the youth apprenticeship, and we were approved for the youth apprenticeship uh, just prior to um, just prior to COVID. So in 2019, and we started gaining some momentum with it, and then uh, COVID hit and kind of derailed us a little bit, as as well as everybody else in the state. But we have really been uh, gaining some more momentum here since we've started back school and working with um, businesses, getting some more businesses signed on, um, and then the. Next, yeah. And this is just a, just a quick overview of the youth apprenticeship. So, so students have to um, get 450 hours of work-based learning. When they do this, they are also paid for this work, and they're paid minimum wage. Um, in the cases that we had, uh, we had five students in this program in 2019. All students, the businesses that hired them, they were paid more than minimum wage. Um, and so it's just, it was a great opportunity for those students. And uh, our, our newest initiative that we have been working on with Chesapeake College is a culinary arts uh, youth apprenticeship program. So we have been working on that 
that with them for a little, probably close to a little over a year now, and we will be launching that in the in the spring. And so we have 10 spots open for students, and we are we are reserving five for each high school. Uh, and we have businesses that have signed on, specific restaurants that have signed on for this initiative. We have some more that are waiting for approval by the um, Maryland Department of Labor, and that goes up for approval uh, next month. And so. We believe that we're going to have enough uh, businesses. We actually will probably have more spots than we have students uh, for them to go to. Um, and then the other, the other big piece uh, to this is that they, um, we have worked, uh, worked with the Chamber of Commerce, worked with the college, and we have secured uh, grant funding for this year to cover the entire cost for these students. So the students that apply to this, those those students that get uh, that apply and get selected, will not have to pay anything to do this program. So we're we're very excited about it. And again, we've. Uh, been working on this for quite a while. We've we've um, talked and met with uh, school principals, with counselors, um, with the college, with businesses. So we're we are ready ready to get this going and really excited. So I think we'll we'll have uh, you know once we get everything out, I think we'll have a very good um, you know participation rate with students. So we're we're very excited about it. Right. And then the last um, opportunities that we have are the dual enrollment and early college academy. We have partnerships with Chesapeake College, Anne Arundel Community College, and Washington College for that dual enrollment and the early college academy. Dual enrollment, the student has to be 16. It has to be a course that aligns with one of our courses that the college is offering. And then as long as it's listed in our catalog, the student can receive both high school credit as well as college credit, earning them on the route for an associate's degree. The early college academy, a student can be accepted into one of these colleges as early as ninth grade, they have to apply. They have to have willing and able transportation to get them back and forth, or if their program is virtual in certain courses, then they could do that in that virtual mode. But again, it's while they are duly enrolled within the high school receiving credit on both sides. But then when they graduate, they actually will finish with an associate's degree if they happen to be in that early college academy as well as get their high school diploma. And in the past, um, the college has offered the courses at the high schools, so that has afforded those students in the um, early college academy to to start their participation. So we have enough to send a professor down to our school and teach? They have in the past. Um, I don't know that that is the practice as of right now, but that's right. how they had done it in the past. So is that the only difference is your early, college, uh, your early college academy is for ninth graders, and to do the dual enrollment, you need to be 16 or older. So 16, 16 or older in the yeah. dual enrollment. And, and we're working with um, with Chesapeake College on this, and, and actually next week I'll be traveling out with um, Dave Harper from Chesapeake College to visit Allegheny Community College, and they, they have had uh, success with early college um, last year, even mm -hmm. through COVID. They graduated uh, a few students through a computer science program. They received their AA degree, actually a week before, before they received yeah. their high school diploma. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna go out and take a look at their program and just see what they did and see uh, you know if there's some things that we can maybe mirror and maybe be in computer science or other programs as well so yeah to look at their practice and see if we can adopt some of them and bring yeah. it back here so it'll be it'll be nice to see a program that's up and running yes so. and then that completes it but there's our contact information so that if there's any questions that people need to contact us do a lot of students or how many students get involved in the uh, homeland security track so we actually have quite a few, and we have two. We have two different tracks. We have the Homeland Security Science track, and we have a, um, a GIS track. And so basically, the way those programs work, and, and most in many of our programs, they they take two core classes that are the same, and then they kind of, which is sort of like the trunk, and then they kind of branch out. Um, and so we do have participation there, and we've increased uh, the certifications that have come out of there too. So some of the uh, ICS certifications that students get, um, they're getting right through that program. So. It's a well sought after program. Mm -hmm. It's it's definitely on the different programs you had. I'm sorry, I don't know what is case. Case is the computer. I mean the uh, curriculum for agricultural mm -hmm. and science okay, education. Thanks. Now, are these offered at both schools, or some at one and the other, and then transport, or how do we work? Some at one or the other. So the the um, the programs that are offered at Queens County High School, we offer transportation from Ken Island High School for them to get to these programs. So they have the opportunity to participate in all of them. So anybody, any of our 
high school students or mm -hmm. can get in either one. It might be a different school, but then we just do a transportation thing. Yep, do the transportation, um, and we work it out with their schedules as far as uh, the, like the fire program, for example, the students from Kent Island, that doesn't start till second period, but they will come to Queen Anne's County High School, do first period there, and then take transportation from the high school um, just a few Real miles forward. over to the over to the uh, fire center. Some of the programs are offered at both, and then there's some that are, yeah. I believe that what Ken Island is offering, Queen Anne's is also offering. Correct. Um, and, but then Queen Anne's does have the um, additional programs. What are the the what are the prerequisites? I mean, I understand that for dual enrollment, it's you're 16 in the early college, kind of mean ninth grade, but are there any grade requirements, any behavior requirements, any for any of your stuff? It, it varies. Um, so, so for the youth apprenticeship, for example, uh, and again, that's a newer one, a little bit different. The students have to be 16 in order to get in there, um, you know, typically juniors and seniors. Mm -hmm. Some of the other programs, um, it, it depends, or biomedical science, which is a pretty rigorous program. There is a, is a GPA requirement, uh, but for the most part, there are, are no um, requirements that restrict them from getting in. You know, some programs they can start in ninth grade. Um, other programs, there are cosmetology, for example, they have to meet, you know, Maryland, uh, you know, guidelines for them to actually complete the program hour requirements. So uh, it, some of them are, are pretty strict. Nursing is the same way. Um, they have to meet Maryland Board of Nursing requirements to actually get through the program. But but typically, there's we don't look at, um, you know, discipline records and that type of thing for students to get in. We have a we have a, a form that they fill out and we you know get the students in as best as we can. That also for your honors and your AP, there's no prerequisites. There are some prerequisite coursework that students may need to do in order to get to a class, but other than that, um, and then as far as the early college, they have to actually apply to one of those and make it through their acceptance process. So it's not something that we just say, okay, we're gonna offer you the early college program. The college has to actually accept them through that application process. So it's it's the same requirements as, as a student who would be going in otherwise. Thanks. When they say contact information, I'm sure the guidance counselors at the schools are up on this because, I mean, to come to you two is one thing, but, you know, when they're ninth and 10th grade, educate the students and the parents even to make sure these opportunities exist. I think it's great as long as we're getting it out to everybody, you know, mm -hmm. as soon as we can. I get, is there a thing to get that out pretty much? It's our program of study. Yeah. The program of study and the counselors, they, they work with the students as far as setting up like their four year goal plans mm -hmm. and working through what are going to be their course programs that they're going to take and different pathways that they want to do. And they always talk about the opportunities for that dual enrollment. A highly motivated student, they would talk about the possibility of that early college. So just to follow up to that then, uh, since it would start in the fall, if you went in, you could in theory go to the fall when you're in ninth grade. Do we go to the middle schools and do, are they familiar with the programs in mm -hmm. eighth grade? There's an articulation process and so our counselors from the high school go down into the middle school. They talk with the students and help them with that scheduling process. And then their counselors within their school at the middle school level also talk about their different pathways there too. That's all part of their four year trajectory plans mm -hmm. that they have to complete. I mean, I, I, I'm a 100% fan of this, like the CTE program. We're working closely with businesses so we know what requirements they're requiring for these students to come out with and skills and skills of that level and stuff. I know, I mean, we're educators, but they're, um, for a better word, practical people actually doing the work in the field. Absolutely, and, and we're, we're building upon that as well. Um, as you know, the, the county hired on a CTE liaison, Ms. Mm -hmm. Connie Dean, and, mm -hmm. and her and I have been working together. She's been, uh, you know, really boots on the ground, going to businesses, connecting. You know, this culinary program has been, has been a major focus of ours because we really want to to make it go and she has really been doing that and so um, we talk on a regular basis and, and we want to increase that increase what the you know what the businesses are, are asking for what they need from our students when they come out of these programs so we, we definitely are doing that. I'm prepared for that because yes. you know I, when I, and I look at these AP and, and college classes everybody's looking for grant or funds and, and scholarships but you know a, a student comes out with 
you know, as a second or first semester freshman or even a sophomore, I mean, that's a, a big amount of money they're saving if they can get out of college and only have three years in theirs rather than. Absolutely. The AP courses offer them mm -hmm. that ability and that if they've taken several of them, oftentimes they're basically testing out of their first year mm -hmm. in college and, and it saves a ton of money. Right. I mean, I just think it is to me, there's so many great win-win opportunities on this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and at CTE program, I mean, to me, it's just as important to have life skills and work skills, not just an education. And you need education, but just as far as, you know, everybody's not going to go into a higher education and stuff like that. It, it provides a lot of different opportunities and, and open doors for students that they may not have thought of. It's a lot of talent development across the board. And this is maybe not a good question to ask, but what numbers of the student, like the juniors and seniors in our high school, are involved with the CTE program or advanced placement classes? They're actually, you know, doing more than what they would be doing 20 years ago when you only had a high school diploma. We that I'd have to look into to see how many had gone through the program and where they are now. Okay. I'm sure there's probably some postgraduate surveys that go out, but we could. Look I just, into I'm just wondering. I mean, like, if we have, I think what maybe 300 in each of our senior classes. I mean, as, or, or, as far as CTE, or, at least, at least a half of them at least involved in one of these two programs that's, or something. That's just about, for CTE, we're at about 48, 49% of students that have either completed a pathway, completed youth apprenticeship, um, or earned a, some type of industry recognized credential. And that is, that's also a measure that we're going to be held. It's been pushed back a little bit. It was it was originally the More Jobs for Mail Owners Act that was um, supposed to be, you know, come to um, fruition by 2025. Now that's kind of rolled in into the the Kerwin blueprint and they've they've kind of ramped it up a little bit but as far as as far as that number goes it's we have to have 45 percent we're at 48 49 we're going to try to increase it uh, so we're in pretty good shape many districts around the state um, are not even close to that number so so we're doing pretty well and as far as our AP enrollment on our average years we've been rolling a little over 500 students having involvement in AP coursework um, and probably more than half of them take the AP test so not every student that takes the course will take the test but they're in there doing it but we have over 500 students now last year of course because of the being online and the virtual experience some of our enrollment went down a little bit but on average we're running around 500 to 550 students enrolled in AP coursework I, I'm I think it's a great pro both programs are great things I think opportunities for our kids you know any other questions by board members Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank, we had other members from our CNI team here to okay. support them. So I want to thank them. Yeah, thank so you. So shout out to them for being here. <laughs> National School Bus Safety Week. <laughs> thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Stop, have a seat. <laughs> it's not wired. <laughs> <laughs> the hot seat. Um, good evening, uh, board members. Um, this week is the uh, National School Bus Safety Week. And um, I thought it was fitting since we had a work session to honor some of the uh, people responsible for the day in and day out operations that occur. Um, you know, National uh, School Bus Safety Week is uh, October 18th through the 22nd. And with us, we have Mr. John Murdoch, who is sitting in the center. He is our transportation coordinator. Uh, Mr. Murdoch has um, started out with us as a special needs driver, field trip driver, athletic driver, and has worked his way up to a bus driver trainer. And now he is coordinator of transportation. Um, next to him, we have um, Gretchen um, um, who is a bus driver trainer who was with us, um, who has many years of experience. And then we also have Tammy Kurzklowski. Did I kill it? All right. I'm terrible with that last name. And her just job description is a um, transportation dispatcher, but do not let that fool you. Um, she uh, has her CDLs, and these individuals have been filling in uh, when we have drivers out for COVID to keep the buses running. Matter of fact, Tammy um, 
just dropped off the boys soccer team from Queen Anne's County High School down to Ken Island High School for a game tonight and came back to here and we'll be heading back in the bus to pick up the team. Um, third day start about 4.30 in the morning and they don't really get done until about 6, 6.30 at night. Um, so again, you know, um, Ms. Frazier and, and Tammy and, and, and John are the ones, the boots on the ground that uh, help promote the national um, school safety. And I did also want to say, you know, thank you to our uh, four LLCs um, that provide uh, transportation to our students every day, along with our um, special needs bus drivers. We average about 2 million miles a year. Um, transportation-wise. That doesn't include um, field trips or athletic trips. It's about uh, 11,500 miles a day um, that we're transporting. And I, I'm going to say it's not one of the toughest jobs is making split-second decisions uh, with a child getting on and off the bus, whether the red lights, you know, are on. Um, you know, we have our bus, um, red light bus runner program in effect. The Sheriff's Department also assists us with that. But it, it is a very challenging job to make those kinds of decisions of a child getting on the bus making sure the cars are stopped um, and, and truly you know they should be honored for that um, again the contractors our employees um, it's something that occurs 180 days a year and I know this is the national week for it but again it occurs every single day and I just wanted to bring these individuals in front of you uh, Mr. Edie Cook is another bus driver trainer he could not be here tonight but again you know I know you see some other counties that are struggling to you know fill those positions we have been able to keep everything going and the buses with their wheels still spinning um, thanks to our dedicated staff so I, I if, would just like to thank, thank you, you thank all for you. you did what you do and in a second if we could just get a picture um, I do have a um, a proclamation from the uh, Governor Hogan, but I kind of wanted to make it something special about just our county because, you know, it is a you know, national and a statewide thing, but thank you for all that you do, um, and again, for all the bus drivers. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, my hat's off to you because when I was little, I rode the bus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll date myself. John, I've worked with John's father and his grandmother at the, uh, at the uh, Florida, so it's been a while. But, you know, the bus driver is the first person these kids see in the morning. I mean, 6, 7 o'clock in the morning. And it's the last one they see in the evening. I mean, I know they we have great teachers and great support staff, but these bus drivers are a major part of these children's lives. And, I mean, they're like, you know, I can remember, you know, they're, they're like your parents. You know, you knew Mr. Gaines or who Mr. Walls or Mr. Murdoch, whoever was doing this and it's just it's amazing what what these bus drivers and it's a responsibility i mean 301 50 i mean even 213 it's 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 my hat's off to you you got a great responsibility and uh, i i i personally appreciate everything you do only because i have grandkids on your buses too so <laughs> and i think the other board members probably feel the same i'm sure yeah absolutely thank you thank, thank you, you. Uh, yeah. thank you if we could get a picture with that yeah. yeah. if you guys sure. don't mind please because we have to get uh, Tammy back on the bus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hurry now. That's too much to read. Back. <laughs> <laughs> This week with her drivers as we go around. Oh, this, is, this is just a little example. This is going to have to drive a bus. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been handing that. Yeah, I don't know my CDL. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
some chocolate. Take care. said that was very nice mm -hmm. thank, you. thank you they do a great job yep okay we have no current board action items this evening our future meetings our next meeting will be november the third our regular meeting mm -hmm. our work session will be on the 17th of november uh, we will be getting into our budget season which will be additional meetings probably in end of november december but the ones scheduled right now are november the third for our regular meeting and november 17th our work session also i'd like to announce at a queen Anne's county high school the pops is having a, a thing at the auditorium at 7 p.m this evening uh, yep the pops concert it's pops one concert. of one of my favorite yeah so anybody that has time to slide out there it could be a very nice evening do i have any other future business for the board Negative motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.